thank you so much for all your work over the last few years. I don't think I'd be standing in front of you without your support to UNESCO, to the Hold the Line Coalition, to so many friends here. Um, but here's the thing, there are so many more like me, so many more who struggle every day just to do their jobs. The quote, without facts, you can't have truth. Without truth, you can't have trust. Without these three, we have no shared reality. We cannot solve any problem. We have no democracy. That's evidence-based, data-based. I've been up front in the Nobel lecture. I said, it's time to reform or revoke Section 230. And that is because impunity must stop. Let me take this apart. It is a battle for facts, but let's start with the data. Justice Brandeis said in the way to fight hate speech is with more speech. No longer. It's a different world. It's like we're speaking a different language. This is data. This is algorithms. You heard this from Audrey's speech today, right? But think about it like this. How did we go from the, the world we knew to the world where we are today? Um, it's going from an Excel sheet of data to big data. It's going from thinking through one word at a time to AI to natural language processing, GPT-3 that takes every word and punches 1.7 billion permutations of what the next word can be. It is a very, very different world where free speech is used to pound free speech. This I know in person. 90 hate messages per hour meant to stop me from doing my job. So, that change of scale, right? Here's that, uh, let me just summarize all of this, and I apologize to folks at UNESCO who have seen this 10 million times, because I keep saying I feel like Cassandra and Sisyphus combined since 2016. New gatekeepers, from journalist to technology, from news organizations which are held accountable, you can hold us accountable, we are transparent, we make a mistake, we correct it to technology, which is in the dark. What principles guide it? Let me quickly tell you what those principles are. So the very first thing in 2014 was just when we saw it, content was separated from distribution. That's a big shift, because now you can do the best journalism, you can have the best content. NGOs, UNESCO, the UN considered one of those, won't get us wide distribution as an influencer. I mean, you'll hear it in the panel, right? And why? Because let's talk values. The UN was set up with these principles, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that we signed to. But what if this is the value today? You go to your kid and say, hey, lie, I'll reward you. Lie all the time, I'll keep rewarding you. That's the fundamental design of the social media platforms that now connect all of us. Why? It's embedded in, this, in a model that we now call a business model called surveillance capitalism. We didn't get that name until 2019 um, from Shoshana Zuboff. And why lies? Why do lies spread faster? The second one, MIT study from 2018, we felt it in 2016 in the Philippines. For some reason, facts are really boring. And the lies, especially when laced with fear, with anger, with hate, with tribalism, us against them, they spread. It's like throwing a lit match into kindling. That's a fact. Lies spread faster than facts. So if you raise your family telling them to lie, what kind of people do they become? Pull it out, right? That's the incentive structure. When that is the, the beginning of our incentive structure, we live in the upside down. I always go to Stranger Things, you know, the upside down. This is where we are. It's yucky, covered with yuck, <laughs> deceptively familiar, 
But you know, we have to somehow turn it right side up in your hands. Turn it right side up. Because our communication systems today are insidiously manipulating us. It is a behavior modification system. This term, A-B testing. Imagine if a drug company came in and said, hey, you're A, let's test drug A. You, drug B. Oh, drug A, you guys died, sorry. That's what's happening to our minds, to our emotions. Because the greatest problem we face, and a, a biologist actually said this, E.O. Wilson, he said, the greatest crisis we face are our paleolithic emotions, our medieval institutions, and our godlike technology. Very, very different, right? So how do we, what kinds of things do we put into a law? Because in the end, the way we deal with this is a long-term education, medium-term legislation, Short term, we're defenseless. It is just us, and I'll show you how we can handle it. But all of these things come into play. Data privacy, antitrust, user safety, and content moderation is the end of the cascading failure. At dinner the other night, I was saying, you know, when we focus only on content moderation, it's like there's a polluted river, and we take a glass, we scoop out the water, we clean up the water and then dump it back in the river. What we have to do is go all the way to the factory polluting the river, shut it down, and then resuscitate the river, right? That's the challenge in front of us. Um, I'll show you from my experience, and I apologize to those who have seen this. In 2016, we came out with a weaponization of the internet series. We showed how 26 fake accounts can influence up to three million others. It's cheap, it's easy, and the incentive structure is lies. Lies spread at least six times faster than really boring facts. I feel sorry for anyone in government. I feel sorry for any woman in the public sphere. In the Philippines in 2017, women were attacked at least 10 times more than men. And the end goal, well, Here's what happened to me in 2016, 90 hate messages per hour. But it wasn't quantified until I began to get pummeled with things like, what they do is to, they look for your weaknesses. So what we did, our only defense, it's a blessing and a curse when you get targeted because you see all the attacks. So we gathered the data, this is the first um, network in 2017 that attacked me, attacked opposition politicians, attacked women. And it was so systematic, it was broken down by demographics. What attacks did I get? Things like this, my gender, my color, um, anything that will make you ashamed, right? Fearful, because the goal is to make you opt out. And then when I didn't, uh, then it came out like this. This is the day I was convicted. I'm still going strong. I still believe that we're going to win these cases. But you can see here what they do, because if they, if they can't win with exponential lies bottom up, they come top down with the same lies. That's, if they still can't win, the weaponization of me, social media, the weaponization of the law, then they look for your weakest points. For me, I have dry skin. You know, I've been, a, this is my 37th year as a journalist. So for some reason, they started doing this. They kept the code word, scrotum face. My skin is better than that. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> But this is dehumanization, and it isn't just happening to me. The end goal of things like this leads to real-world violence. Online violence is real-world violence. So it took months for Facebook to take this stuff out. Um, 
And then they did things like this. Uh, every time there's an award or there's a film or there's anything, the Guillermo Cano World Press Freedom Prize, I got pummeled for that. They're, they made my skin look worse and then they're kind of funny. Scrotum face gets added on. And then if, if the social media platforms begin to take this out, they're still there, but if, when they take it out, they then code word it, right? This isn't just happening to me. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Nietzsche was right. UNESCO in 2021, thank you, um, along with the International Center for Journalists, came out with this. A study, Julie Pesetti did the chilling global trend in online violence against women journalists. The first time outside of Rappler where we began to see data and stats, 73% of women journalists have been attacked and move it beyond women journalists. Women researchers are opting out, especially those working on disinformation. Women politicians are opting out precisely because they get attacked, right? Of the 73%, 25% receive threats of physical violence, and of that, 20% have turned into real-world violence, right? Attacked or abused offline. But here's the thing, for me, at least in this one, um, ICFJ and UNESCO took almost half a million attacks and they went through. What were the goals? 60% were meant to tear down my credibility. Thank you, thanks to you, it didn't work. <laughs> but there are many Filipinos who believe it. So these are some of the things that wind up happening when you're trying to do your job. The other 40% was meant to tear down my spirit. It didn't work either. <laughs> um, it's like waving a red flag for a bull, in front of a bull for me. But again, if you look at forbidden stories, the attacks on women are off the scale. It is sending, if you were vulnerable before, LGBTQ plus women, these are attacked even more. This is the last part, right? Like information warfare. That's not even in a lot of the documents we come out with. And yet, geopolitical power is exploiting this. They can go from, forget the nation states, they go to the cellular level, to the weaknesses of our biology, to your fears, and they crack it open. This is why Black Lives Matter in the United States was attacked on both sides in 2016, and the goal was not to make you believe one thing, it was to tear it apart. It was to make you distrust everything. Because if you can't trust, you can't move. There's three layers, personal, that's psychological. The second layer is sociological, groups behave differently. The third layer is the part that there's not much study done on this, it is actually our evolution. Right? When our, our brains are literally are being rewired, when we are pumped full of dopamine, there are studies that are out now that show this. When toxic sludge pumps through each of us to keep us scrolling, making a lot of money for the tech companies, but tearing down any sense of meaning for this high school generation today, for Gen Z. Right? Think about the impact on your kids. And finally, the last one, going back to what Audrey said. She said there are at least 90 elections up to 2024. 2024, I always say it's the last two minutes of democracy because there will be a tipping point. What's happened when the information ecosystem's incentive structure rewards the lies, rewards anger, fear, us against them, is that you wind up electing illiberal leaders democratically, they crumble institutions from within, and they don't stay in their own countries. They ally together. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization, set up by China and Russia, last year brought in Iran, Myanmar, Turkey, tech and economics, right? So the last part is, how can you have integrity of elections? if you don't have integrity of facts. 
That's the geopolitical shift we're in. So the last chunk is, please, don't just think about Russia invading Ukraine. Please think about that too, though. But that's conventional warfare. In the Nobel lecture, I said, this is an individual battle for facts, for integrity, for values. It is up to you, each of us on social media. Don't get lost in this. Stand up, draw the line where on this side you're good and this side you're evil. It's that clear. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is very clear. I'll end it with this. This is what we did in the Philippines because I don't want to leave you depressed. There's a solution. First, find the right solution legislatively because we are not protected. There are no building codes. Right now, I know we're in a building that followed building codes. We are not protected. There's no consumer protection. There is no protection of people on this technology. And it is going to get worse. So what we did is, if it's education long term, legislation medium term, please move faster. Short term, it is just us. And so what we did in the Philippines is this whole of society approach with a data pipeline. And you just, I'm running out of time. I've had my two minutes. So I want to, um, please four layers, right? News, fact checking, they're really boring. Fact checks. The second layer is the mesh. Civil society groups, NGOs, human rights activists, businesses, church, whose task was to share those boring fact checks and add emotion. And we found that inspiration spreads as fast as anger. Inspiration. You are all leaders here. Finally, the third is the research groups, those poor researchers who keep telling us how we are being insidiously manipulated. And the last group is the law. How can you have rule of law if you don't have facts? And our lawyers who were part of this group in the Philippines were the most energized. Because those journalists at the bottom, the first layer, we were exhausted. So this is it. That data pipeline gave us the information. I'll leave it with this to just say today, um, we, I put all of this in this book that came out, but it's now been translated into many different languages. Um, and today, it is out in French. It's there, the question to each of you, what will you sacrifice for the truth? Think about it, this is the moment. This matters. Thank you.